this movie. Man, this dude is off the chain. Here we go with another hood classic. I've never seen this movie before, even though I've had plenty of chances to do so. BET was playing this like every other week. Even as a small child, this movie didn't appeal to me at all, even though I was watching a lot of crap back then. So how do I feel about it now, 20 years later? Y'all should already know. Released in 2004, the cookout starts a guy you've never heard of as Ty Anderson, a freshly drafted basketball player who is torn between living a bougie lifestyle and sticking to his roots as a boy from the hood. And that's really it. <laughs> this movie ain't got no plot, but I'll talk about that later. We open up to a montage showing Todd's life. We see him in elementary school getting picked on by a couple kids and his childhood friend Becky saying, it's okay Todd. I'll always be there for you. Cause you know, she got braces. Real cute. Jump to Todd making the winning shot for his high school team with Becky cheering on in the background. Uh, what the hell was that? Y'all see that cut? <laughs> now Todd is fresh out of college and getting ready for the pro basketball draft. <laughs> this is freaking hilarious because they basically tell you what this is without saying the letters NBA. We get a random Mark Cuban cameo, which could have been cut from the movie cause he never shows up again. And we got generic commentators sitting with Baron Davis and Elton Brand, who look completely dead behind the eyes, probably not trying to forget their lines. Todd is doing an interview with his parents, Emma and Jojo. Jojo! Hey, it's the Fresh Prince's mom. I like her. Wendy Williams is here. Stirring up shit as usual. Todd, you were raised in the ghetto, the hood, dragged up in the streets after your father abandoned you and your mother. And don't worry, Wendy, I'll be coming back for you. Oh my God. The draft comes up and Todd introduces his parents to his new bougie girlfriend, Brittany, played by the lovely and delicious Megan Good. Let's make it good. Let's smash it good. Todd ends up getting drafted first to the uh, New Jersey Nets, which is immediately made irrelevant. Cause that game winning shot you saw earlier, that's the only basketball you gonna see in this movie. We also get glimpses of Todd's extended family. And I'm sure you'll recognize a bunch of these faces. Uh, Reg E. Kathy, Jamal and Jared Mixon. You like him, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Glover and Farrah Fawcett? The hell are you doing here? Ja Rule and his crackhead friend also noticed Todd got drafted. Ja gets the idea to get Todd to sign a bunch of sneakers so he can sell them on eBay. Sure. Todd and his cousin Jamal go ball at the local courts. They some hating ass niggas who elbow Todd in the face and tell him to bounce. Ja, who was waiting on Todd, runs five dudes for their sneakers and fails to get Todd's attention. My main man, I like your boy, it's playing, baby. Salt. That's all you taste is salt. Homeboy like, man, you don't know Ty. Give me my shoes back. Ja Rule like, fuck out of here. <laughs> Walks off with the sneaks. I know we got the strap, but come on, man. Y'all can't go out like that. Todd's contract is worth 30 million, which ain't bad. So what's the first thing you think he does? Buys a bunch of nonsense, of course. A butler, some crap for his parents, crap for Brittany. And of course, he buys a multi-million dollar house. Todd moves into a white neighborhood, thug Nificent style. <laughs> Farrah Fawcett runs in the house. Oh my God, honey, I saw some Negroes. She actually says that. I just saw a gang, you know, yo, of Negroes across the street. Negroes? Yes. <laughs> There is another side plot where Todd's agent is like, dude, your 30 million is spread out over six years. You can't afford this stuff. I'll get you some sponsorships, but in the meantime, chill. It doesn't matter because it's never brought up again. Up until this point, the movie was all right. But once he moves into this mansion, it goes downhill very quickly. So the plot, if you can call it that, is that Todd is meeting a sponsorship representative the same day he's having a cookout. Hilarity ensues. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't. Oh, and Ja Rule is coming to rob him. The big shot. 
Yeah, this is good. Where can I find this house right here? Let me introduce you to his family. There's Todd's cousin Jamal and his parents. His mom wants him to be a ball player like Todd, but he wants to be a doctor, which is a meme at this point. We got the ghetto chick with like five kids. I need help with all these dang on bills ever since Leon violated his parole. And we also got Jamal and Jerome as his cousins from down south. I find this the most insulting thing in the movie. <laughs> I ain't never met somebody from the South who acts like this. These are literal cartoon characters. Hey there, cousin. We didn't hit this old deer on the way. We're going to head out back and put him on the grill. <laughs> Sorry about the brains on the floor. <laughs> Fuck out of here. And it does it in there. You got the stereotypical English butler. You got the fancy fufu French chef. He is then from Prague, internationally renowned master chef, man chef meister. Ch What's with the fucking laugh track? Which leads me to my biggest issue here. This is not funny. I get it. Comedy is subjective, but this sucks. Of course, we got stock sound fart jokes. Bad. <laughs> Ja Rule crashes his car, so they hitch a ride with the dude from The Sopranos. He works with fertilizer. There's a demand for good quality shit. I tell the farmers, make sure you feed your heart. Did you get it? He smells like shit. Did you get it? Did you get it? He smells like shit. Queen Latifah plays a psychotic security guard who takes her job way too seriously. Her boyfriend broke up with her, so now she's living single. It's not funny! The mom keeps sending Britney out to buy hams. Is that supposed to be funny? I, I don't know. Danny Glover comes in at the end dressed like Flavor Flav. Got he. he puts Farrah Fawcett in check, and everybody cheering them on like, yeah, play it, do your thing. At this point, I'm just thinking like, what the hell am I watching? The comedy is bottom of the barrel, coonery sitcom humor. The drama, there is none. The characters are not fleshed out, and side plots last five minutes each, so it all just rings hollow. Example, Emma's sister bought a $1,200 dress because, and I quote, I want it to be more fabulous than you. I want it to be more fabulous than you, okay? Huh? All the while we were growing up, all I've heard was how beautiful Emma was and how smart Emma was. Lady, you're in your 50s with a husband who loves you and a son who wants to be a doctor. Get over yourself. After terrorizing the representative and everyone tearing his shit up, Todd finally snaps and tells everyone to get the hell out. He goes to cool off when Becky finally reappears with 13 minutes left in the movie. Played by Eve, because I guess we had to force one more black name in there. Becky tells him, don't be mad at your family. They're all you got. And Todd is like, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> and here's something else I don't get. You telling me that in their four years apart, Becky didn't find a man? She held out for this nigga? This bum ass Kawhi Leonard? <laughs> Anyway, Todd restarts the party. Everyone is about to eat. When Ja Rule finally makes it there, the writers couldn't figure out a way for Ja Rule to find Todd's house. So he conveniently is hot wiring Britney's car in the middle of this random ass parking lot. So Ja Rule has been calling himself bling throughout the entire movie. Here we get the big reveal of his real name. Percival? Percival ass smacky? I'm done. Queen Latifah busts through the ceiling with the world's most obvious stunt dummy, keeping him near until the cops show up. Todd dumps Britney, and that's literally the end of the movie. <sighs> what else can I say, man? This movie sucks. The best way I can describe it 
This is House Party 4 with a budget. <laughs> this was also Farrah Fawcett's last movie before she passed. That's a damn shame. And I know it's gonna be that one guy in the comment section, oh, you just a hater, bro. I saw this movie at my auntie house when I was eight years old, and it was hilarious. You don't know what you're talking about. You wanna run with that narrative? Fine. Let me call out some other comedy movies that came out the exact same year. Barbershop 2, Club Dread, Johnson Family Vacation, Shaun of the Dead, Mean Girls, Shrek 2, Napoleon Dynamite, Dodgeball, White Chicks, Anchorman Ron Burgundy, Harold and Kumar, Seed of Chucky, SpongeBob SquarePants, Fat Albert, Hell, some people even like Soul Plane. And you expect me to recommend somebody go watch the fucking cookout? Hell no. I also got one more thing to share. Storm P, or his real name, Koran Pender, fell on some hard times. While teaching, he was also taking part in a cross-country cocaine smuggling ring. That ends up getting a close friend of his killed in 2012. Koran went on trial in 2017, testifying against his friend's alleged killer. Uh, Karan admitted to his involvement in the drug trade and is currently serving time in federal prison. There are no updates on his whereabouts. Why did I mention this? Because it's a hell of a lot more interesting than anything in this movie. I'm going to end on this. If you're a regular, you know what I hate more than anything. An unnecessary sequel. You declared bankruptcy after making millions. What happened to the money, Todd? You smoked it up? Hell no. Hookers. Listen, I never had to pay for anything in my life. What do you have to say about this? Go on, son. Tell these fools your story. He held up my family's cookout a couple years back. I'm one of the coaches for a local street ball team. We playing in a championship game. You are going to help us win. This can't be happening again. Nope. I ain't, I ain't doing it. Show's over. Go home.